I'm pointing at the screen for a tiny fraction of, actually, do you know what? I'm just gonna, appears to have thrown you all off. Some of you are coming back. One of you is back. Oh my goodness me. I'll just flip you around. It's more fun talking to your faces. Hi everyone. Hi, Lara here, super professional. I GCF physics teacher, so my, my battery on my phone was low. So in order to charge it, I turned Wi-Fi off on my phone because that helps it to charge faster. Uh, but I forgot to turn the Wi-Fi off again. So I have finally started the lesson about 20 minutes late and my Wi-Fi was off on my phone. So it's just uh, kicked everybody off. Some people have come back. Some people may have just decided to not study IGCSE physics and it's all my fault. That might be the situation as well. Should we wait and see if they come back? I don't know. <laughs> oh man, they're back! I can see, people are back. That's enough people. I think that's everyone who's back before. Right, I'm gonna show you the screen and then we'll just pretend that none of this ever happened because I can cut all this. So people watching on Catch It will just be like, yeah, everything seems fine. Okay, you ready? Let's do this. <clears throat> Do, do, do. <laughs> Hello Science Lions! Hello IGCAC physicists! We are studying magnetism. We've done one lesson on magnetism. Uh, we're going to do another lesson on magnetism and talk about electromagnets. But first of all, I thought we'd do... Maybe it seems a bit weird when we're learning about magnetism. We're going to do about a static electricity exercise, which does involve... Um, it's probably best to just do it by a sink, if you've got a sink. I don't want to take you to my sink, so I'm going to pour water slowly from a jug into a bowl whilst holding a charged uh, plastic bag next to the drizzle of water. Um, yesterday I managed to put, literally pour water onto my computer, so I'm going to keep it a little bit further away. But yeah, what we're going to do is we're going to rub a plastic bag on our heads. Come on, do it. Rub any kind of like bit of cheap plastic on your head. <laughs> as long as it's, you know, reasonably clean. It doesn't have meat in it. What's happening roughly? We have talked a lot about this in our electricity lessons, so I won't go into too much detail. But atoms are made up of protons and electrons, right? Protons are positive, electrons are negative. So when you rub a plastic bag on your hair, electrons are getting pulled off. So the hair and the bag end up being charged. I can't remember which way around it is. Your hair's a bit more negative and your bag's a bit more positive or vice versa. It doesn't matter, okay, for today. And, and indeed for your GCSE exam, it doesn't matter. So water particles are, are neutral. They're not charged, but they have got a slightly more positive side and a slightly more negative side. So what should happen uh, if I get this box and I stick it shoveled Lego story stuff out of the way and I put you on top of this box here not literally just my camera phone with you inside then you should should be able to see see the magic happening here right I think this bag's pretty charged this is why I don't use conditioning so there so I'm gonna if you've got a tap just put the tap on so there's a tiny little trickle of water coming out of your tap. The tiniest trickle that you can, but it's a smooth line. I'm going to try and pour water from this jug and hold the bag really near the water, but don't let it touch the water and see what happens. Whoa! Oops! Did you see that? It moved! It moved the stream of water so much that I've just soaked my desk. Yeah, the water's very clearly getting attached, to, uh, attracted to the back, right? Very clearly, she says. Possibly too much water now. Right, I think I've proved it to you. <laughs> uh, yeah, the water, the drizzle of water, get moves towards the plastic back. Um, now, we have talked about this in previous lessons, and we've just said, well, water particles have got a positive end and a negative end, so what's happening is the bag, let's say the bag has a positive charge, if the bag has a positive charge, then the positive sides of the water particle would be repelled by the bag, yeah? Because uh, positive things and positive things push away from each other. And, or it could be that the negative side of the water is attracted to the positive bag. We've talked about that a lot, right? Charges, attracting, like charges, uh, repelling, and unlike charges, attracting, just like poles of a magnet, north and the south are attracted to each other, like poles, north and north, 
push away from each other. Repel is the proper word for our IGCSE. Um, but you, if you're thinking about fields, because last week we were talking about magnetic fields, you might be thinking, hang on a second, the plastic bag and the water never touch each other. So how does the water know that the plastic bag is there? And the answer is there is also a thing called an electric field. Um, and you've got two different specifications who might write your IGCSE physics paper. There's Cambridge and there's Pearson. If you end up doing the Cambridge paper, they need you to know about electric fields, but Pearson don't. So very quickly, we'll, we'll talk about it and then we'll stick to magnetic fields for the rest of the time. So electric field lines, because there's electric field lines just like there were magnetic field lines. Basically, around charged things, so around electrons, protons, anything that has a charge that is positive or negative, there is an electric field. And electric field lines run from positive to negative. We've talked about magnets and how magnetic field lines run from north to south. Electric field lines, it's from positive to negative. So if, for example, you've got two plates and one of them's got a positive charge and one of them's got a negative charge, the field lines will, the arrows will go from positive to negative, all right? Uh, if you've got what Cambridge call a point charge, if you've just got a proton on its own, then can you think what the electric field lines would look like around the proton? What do you reckon? Electric field lines run from positive to negative. What are the field lines around that particle going to look like? Five, four, three, two. Like uh, that. Ah, that's nice, isn't it? Just sending its positivity out into the world. All right, maybe you didn't know that. But if you know that now, that the arrows go from the point charge just out into the ether, what do you reckon um, they look like around a negative charge? Hmm? Slightly easier now, isn't it? With that new knowledge. If you've got the worksheet from my Facebook group, you might be quickly sketching it. Uh, they look like this. They go from positive to negative. So into the negative charge, okay? Um, and if you put two of those next to each other, uh, what's this? Again, you've got this on your worksheet. So you've got two little balls next to each other. It sort of looks like a happy Spider-Man face. One of them's got field lines coming out of it and they're going into the other one. So which one of those is which? Five, four, three, two, one. Things go from positive, field lines go from positive to negative. So the one that's radiating outwards, that would be the positive, and the one where they're going in, that would be the negative charge, okay? The other one you might need to know about if you're doing the Cambridge spec is what happens when you've got spheres. So on a sphere, say a positively charged sphere, as you'd expect, the magnetic field lines come out. Here there's a negatively charged sphere next to it, so the field lines are going in to that sphere. The only thing you need to know about that, which is a bit strange, is that there's no electric field right in the centre of the sphere, because obviously... Like, if you imagine all the field lines are going inwards, they all sort of cancel each other out. It's not quite as intuitive as what the other things I've just said. Go on then. Here we've got a sphere, and it's got a negative charge on the top and a positive charge on the bottom. If you had to draw field lines around that thing, what would you do? Think about it for 10 seconds, then I'll show you. Is there going to be any joining up? Five, four, three, two, one. There we go. They would look like that. So they would go in at the negative end and out at the positive end. And uh, these these field lines would just go straight out. Okay, right. Um, so that's electric field lines. I'm not going to talk about electric fields at all anymore because we're going to talk a lot about fields but it's important that you know it's always magnetic fields we're going to talk about now right electric fields and magnetic fields are very closely linked together i'm going to show you a quick little slide about why because it took me a while and teachers are allowed to reuse things that's what we do <laughs> so in 1819 danish scientist hans christian orsted uh, was giving a lecture involving magnets and electricity and he just happened to have a compass and put it down next to an electric wire. It wasn't doing anything special, wasn't doing an experiment, just happened to drop his compass down next to electric wire and was very surprised by what happened. Whee! The compass started moving around. So we looked at 
Um, compass is a bit last week. We're going to look at them more this week. Yeah, the compass started moving. What's going on there? Well, charged particles are surrounded by electric fields, just like magnets are surrounded by magnetic fields. And it turns out, inside an electric wire, where charged particles are moving around, um, electric fields create magnetic fields. So a, a current, a, a moving charge, like an electric current, creates a magnetic field, which is what was making the compass move around. It was a very cool thing to discover just accidentally in front of a huge audience full of people. And then James Scott Maxwell came, comes along and, and kind of goes into a bit more detail about how magnetic fields and electric fields are sort of one part of the same beast, if you like. Um, so, <clears throat> so there's a, a way of, I've just said that when current flows in a wire, you get a magnetic field around the wire. So we need to talk about how you know which direction the magnetic field is going in. Are you okay with this idea that magnetic fields have direction, right? They go from north to south, they have a direction. Um, you can use something called the right hand thumb rule. So if you hold your hand out in front of you in a very loose thumbs up, so your thumbs up, um, but I want your fingers to be kind of curled around, not all tightly tucked in, but just slightly curled around as if they're in a thumbs up. The rule is, that you're, if your thumb is pointing in the direction that the current is going in, I don't know why, I've got some new pens and they're, re, they're refillable and they're just rubbish. Here's a wire. Um, you, if you've been to my electricity lessons, you know that convention says current flows from positive to negative. If you know about electricity and electrons, you might know that a lot of the time that is not actually true, but just because convention, because in the olden times they didn't know, we say that electric current, electrons flowing, go from positive to negative. I know, no, they're not going to change it. Just go with it, okay? So in this wire, if we say that this end of, say, a battery is positive and this end is negative, we say, because convention's not actually happening, that the current is going to be moving upwards from the positive to the negative, just like the fields, right? Are you all going to be okay and not horribly terrified if I write an I for current? I for current. Obviously, I stands for current. <laughs> Physicists hate us all. Um, so do your loose thumbs up with your right hand, which is hard if you're left-handed. If you point your thumb upwards, so that's going in the direction of the current, your curled fingers will point in the direction that the magnetic field is going. So it's going sort of from the back of your hand towards your nails. So here, if I put my thumb up, because that's the direction that the current is flowing in, I can see that the magnetic field would be coming like from around the back of the wire and then heading off towards the right. So if I was gonna draw this magnetic field in, I'd do something like that. Is that okay? okay isn't it and can you see that if we if we say reversed the direction of the current so now positive is at the top and negative is at the bottom so the current's flowing in that direction does it work turn your thumb upside down because your thumb's got to point in the direction that the current is flowing uh, suddenly yeah we've reversed the direction of our magnetic field right now the magnetic field is curving uh, behind the wire and going to the right so it would be more like yeah <laughs> um this you have to know this for a straight wire but you also have to know what direction the magnetic field is going in if the current is flowing in like a loop of wire should we just do it yeah this is just it's just so sad isn't it it's it's so sad to see oh, a little bit of tissue on me there we go Let's try try a loop. Um, I tell you what, I'll show you on the on this screen as well. It's a nice picture here. Gives me a chance to check my phone battery as well. Oh, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> so here we go. This is a, a sort of slightly nicer image. Yeah, you can see current flowing from bottom to top, and a piece of paper showing that the the magnetic field line is going in that direction. Yeah, let's draw a circle of wire then. So say we've got this big loop of wire and let's say that the left hand side of the loop is positive and the right hand side is negative. Which way is the current flowing? 
yeah, from, from positive to negative, so the current's going in that direction around the loop. Does that work? So if we point our thumb, our right hand thumb, in the direction that the current is flowing, then the magnetic field will be going sort of from out of the page and round to the right, okay? So kind of like that. But then the other side is moving upside down, so it's coming again out of the, wait, is that right? Yeah, out of the page and round to the right, like that. Uh, round to the left, I should say. I'm not very good with lefts and rights, which makes this lesson very difficult for everybody. So can you see that in a loop of wire, the magnetic field ends up coming sort of from around the outside of the loop and going through the middle if the current's going in the direction that we've just said because you, and you can work that out using this right hand thumb rule yeah on that side thumb points in the direction of the current magnetic field comes out of the page and round and if you turn your thumb upside down to do the other side the field is still coming out of the page and round okay um the other the only other one you need to know this is like a flat loop of wire is something called a Solenoid. Maybe I just need to wash my board rubber. That would probably help as well. That would make my life slightly easier. A solenoid sounds terrifying. It's actually just a, a coil of wire. Solenoid. You say, oh, I'm writing backwards and it's YouTube, aren't I? I can write forwards thanks to YouTube's amazing righty forwards technology. It's, oh, sorry, that's my battery. It's just telling me that it's low. It's going to be fine. We'll get through this. A solenoid is a coil of wire like this. Um, so this is where things get even more confusing. Because I've told you that the right hand thumb rule says the thumb points in the direction of the current and that tells you which direction the magnetic field's going in. You can actually do it the other way around if you like. If the current is moving in a coil or a curve, you can say that your hand is the current and your thumb will point in the direction of the magnetic field. I know, right? Physics and biology coming together. So let's say this wire here, the current is going upwards. It's not really, it's just not a very good diagram, but if, if the current is curving into the screen, into the board here, then we could make our fingers curve that way and our thumb would show us the direction of the magnetic field, which is, if you're watching on catch up, more people have actually joined since I started talking about this. I know, right? You never can tell. So if the current is going into the board, curve your fingers and pretend that they're the current, and you can see that the magnetic field is now pointing in the same direction of my thumb, off to the left. I did put this uh, on the board with a nice picture for you to try and make it make a little bit more sense. Here we go. Oh, isn't that lovely? What a beautiful picture. So if this orange arrow is showing us the direction that the current is travelling in along this solar noise, what direction do you reckon the magnetic field is going to be going in? So this orange arrow is the current travelling into the screen in this case. So get your right hand, curve your fingers so that they are also kind of curving into the screen and my thumb is pointing off to the left. So if the current in the wire is flowing in that direction, then the magnetic field would be pointing in the same direction as my thumb, which is off to the left in this case. Okay, do you think you're ready for my sheet? Here's another example, here we go. So in this case, the current is going round in a clockwise direction. So if I curve my right hand, remember, if I curve my, little, my fingers so that they're going in a clockwise direction, then in this case, the magnetic field, my thumb would be pointing into the screen, and that is what's happening. It's going into the screen and then around. Yeah, you're ready for the sheet. Here's one last example. Oh, just do the sheet. <laughs> Where's the sheet? Come on. Hey. Here we go. Oh no, it's gonna start revealing the answers. Okay, that's fine. Right, here's my sheet for you, please. I would like you to complete these questions using the right hand rule. Uh, if you haven't got a clue what I'm talking about, then don't worry, hang around and I'll go through the answers in a bit. Um, you, I've split the screen into two bits. So the first questions ask you to work out which way the current is flowing and you've been given the direction of the magnetic field. And the second set of questions ask you to say which way the magnetic field is going in, uh, but you know the current. B is the magnetic field and I is the current.
can slightly charge my phone while you're doing these questions. That would be good. It is, it's charging up, amazing. I'm just gonna hold it there for a bit, so if it makes you a bit seasick. A lot of people saying on Facebook yesterday that this is very hard, so if you are finding it very hard, then, yep, yeah, you're in good company, everyone found it very hard. It doesn't help that some of the diagrams are a bit small, aren't they? How are you doing? Can I go through the answers? <laughs> Having to, ironically, I can't plug my uh, charger in anymore because my phone broke so I'm having to hold um, a big sort of plate next to my phone and charge it up using uh, electromagnetism which we will talk about more in a later lesson all right I'll give you I'll give you 10 seconds just to check your answers if you're really confident you can pretend that this is a GCSE how sure are you about all of the answers All right, so the first one, um, you've got a magnetic field which is going from the left to the right, yeah? So cutting in front of the wire from the left to the right. So if I do that with my right hand whilst simultaneously charging my phone, um, then the current should be going up. Is that right? Because my fingers are going in the direction that the magnetic field is going in. Yay, that's right, good. Uh, this wire again, so this time the current, the magnetic field is on the right hand side going from up to down. So again, if you put your fingers in that position, you should have found that your thumb was sticking out towards the screen, like coming out of the screen, and that is what's happening. Again, um, if you, this time you had to, probably better to use your thumb, wasn't it, to be the magnetic field. So if you point your thumb sticking upwards, because that's what the magnetic field is doing, then the current will be curling round in an anti-clockwise direction. And this one at the bottom, this was a bit tricksy, wasn't it? Um, you've got a magnetic field going from left to right. So best thing was to stick your thumb in that direction. And if you point your thumb to the right, you'll find that your fingers are curling again, like out of the screen. So is that what's happening? If this side is positive and that's the bottom side is negative, well, electricity flows from positive to negative. So yeah, that's right. The current would be moving in the direction that is out of the screen and around. Good. Right, this next one. Cool, charging your phone whilst also going through answers while being left-handed and using the right-hand thumb rule. It's very confusing. Here we go. 
So this one, this time you wanted to use the curl of your fingers to go in the direction of the magnetic field. And again, if you do that, uh, going anti-clockwise, you should find that your thumb was sticking out. So that's the direction that the magnetic field is in, because the current is going anti-clockwise. Um, this sort of electromagnet situation here, which we're going to talk about in a second, the current's going in and wrapping behind the magnet and then going in front of it again. So the current's coming out of the page on the left and then into the page. So if you make your fingers do that, you should have found that your thumb was pointing upwards, so the magnetic field was going upwards. And this one here, uh, again, the current, you have to hold your thumb upside down, give a thumbs down to make your current flow in the direction of your fingers. And then your your thumb was pointing downwards, so that's the direction of the magnetic field was going in. Phew! Right. So finally, now we've done that, we can talk about electromagnets. I'm just going to... Uh, yeah, maybe I can... Oh, I'll put you back up. I think we're doing okay for time. Here we are. Um, so, yeah, wires have magnetic fields around them. But how you can make those magnetic fields a lot stronger and a lot more useful is by putting a bit of iron inside. It's got to be iron. So we touched on this briefly last week, right? You've got a coil of wire. This coil of wire has got a magnetic field around it. Are we OK with that? Because moving uh, electric charges generate magnetic fields. There's two different kinds of magnetic material. There's soft and there's hard. Hard magnetic materials are um, magnets like uh, steel. Hard magnetic materials make permanent magnets. So if you um, magnetise a piece of steel, you will get what's called a permanent magnet. So this, this will probably be steel. Um, actually, it's probably, yeah. If you put steel in a magnetic field, then as we talked about last week, all the little kind of tiny magnet particles line up and you get a permanent magnet. It's very hard to demagnetise it. Something like iron on its own is actually quite a soft magnetic material. So if you put iron in a magnetic field, it sort of turns into a magnet. But then as soon as you take the magnetic field away, then you haven't got a magnet anymore, which is incredibly useful for electromagnets. So an electromagnet, you get a coil of wire, you put a piece of iron inside. Iron, there we go. Uh, and it turns that iron into a, a magnet. But it's a magnet you can turn on and off, right? So very useful for things like scrap yards. If you've got an electromagnet, you turn the electricity on, so the electricity flows, so you get a magnetic field around your iron. The big piece of iron becomes magnetic, and then you've got a magnet, and you can use it to like pick up a car and move it around. And then when you want to drop it, you stop the electricity flowing, like you flick a switch to turn it off. So that takes away the magnetic field, so the iron stops being magnetic and the car falls. That's good, isn't it? Because iron is a soft magnetic material, so it can be a, like a temporary magnet. If you put steel inside your electromagnet, that's not going to work because you get a magnetic field around the steel, the steel turns into a magnet, but then when you turn the switch off to stop the electricity flowing, the steel is just permanently magnetised and you've just got a car stuck to your electromagnet forever. So that's why we use iron inside electromagnets. I have got a picture, it's the classic physics example of an electric bell here, which is using an electromagnet to work. So I've just got four pictures, but they're all mixed up. I just want you to, I'm actually just going to be quiet for a little bit. Can you just study these pictures, try and work out what is happening? You've got a, a kind of U-shaped bit of iron with some electric wire wrapped around it. Study these pictures, try and work out what's happening and see if you can put them in a better order. So I've got them all mixed up here. Here we go. That little blue kind of rainbow you can see coming out, that is a magnetic field.
Can you see how it works? Should we put it in the right order? And just briefly talk it through, and then I will reveal. Um, <laughs> if you if you like a puzzle, there was a picture of Jurassic Park on the front of this holding page for this lesson. Have you worked out why I was using a picture of Jurassic Park to talk about electromagnets? We, we're getting slightly closer to the answer. So just while I hold my phone charger against my phone, <laughs> here's, here's an order that makes slightly more sense. So I'll just quickly talk you through this. Um, here we go, using a bit of Lego. <clears throat> So K is a switch, right? K can be open or closed. At the moment, it's just closed. Uh, U is a cell, which is the word for sort of a single battery on its own. So we've got a fairly simple circuit right here. We've got wire, which is going from the cell. Um, there's a bit in the middle where the wire is connect connected to a little bit of metal. And then there's another bit of metal touching that bit of metal. So it's fine. The circuit's connected. Electricity will flow through there. Through, we've got solenoids here with iron in them. So this is your electromagnet. Um, and then the current, so the, the current is flowing right here. So current is flowing. So because current is flowing through this wire, then that generates a magnetic field. And because someone stuck a big bit of iron in there, that really amplifies that magnetic field and turns the whole thing into a magnet. So we've got this big blue magnetic field showing on the next one. Um, there's a the bit where the metal is connected to another bit of metal you've got this long bar that also has metal on it so what happens is that when this electromagnet is turned on when this iron is magnetized this bit of metal here is attracted to the magnet and goes upwards this bit of metal is a uh, part of a long bar which has got a what am i going to call it a little ball on the end and when that metal gets attracted to the electromagnet, the ball hits the bell. It's good, isn't it? So you get a ding. But what's happened? Because that metal has been attracted to the electromagnet, it's moved upwards and that has pulled these two little bits of metal apart. So the circuit is now broken. So there's no electricity flowing. What happens if the electricity stops flowing? Well, there's no current. So there's no magnetic field. So this iron is not magnetized anymore. So it's not attracting the metal anymore. So it falls and the bell will stop ringing. It's good, isn't it? But then, of course, because it's fallen, these two bits of metal are connected, so the circuit is complete, so it starts again. You see what I mean? So that's a very classic physics-y example of an electromagnet in use. Um, but yeah, we have to... If you haven't seen Jurassic Park, then I'm very sorry, this is very boring for you. Um, but we have talked before about a particular scene in Jurassic Park that I find very, very annoying. When we talked about turning forces really early on in one of our forces lessons, we looked at that scene where, right, there's a raptor trying to get into the control room. Lex, the girl, is on the computer uh, trying to get the door locks working and uh, the, the doctors, Dr Sattler and Dr Grant, are trying to keep the door closed because the locks aren't working so the raptor is going to get in. It's really annoying that scene because uh, Dr Sattler, for all her incredible science knowledge, is pushing like almost exactly on the hinge and we learned in our turning force lesson that if you, you push on the pivot it's not going to make any difference, she could just walk away, it doesn't matter. Anyway, that's not, that's the same scene that we need to talk about now. Why is the lock not working? What is that about? Lex finally, like the power comes back on and Lex finally manages to, to make the door lock, but how? Why isn't the door locked in the first place? <laughs> it's because all the locks in Jurassic Park are electromagnets! Yeah, Hammond built a park that was to contain dinosaurs and made it that in the event of any power failure on an island in the middle of the ocean, if there was ever any kind of power failure, uh, then the, the, the doors would just all become unlocked. Brilliant. So that's that's why I love electromagnets so much, because they remind me of my favourite scene in my favourite film. Um, all right, very quickly before we go, very quickly, uh, we've talked about why it needs to be iron inside an electromagnet and not steel, because steel would make a permanent magnet. Why do we keep talking about the circuits being attached to, attra attached to batteries? Do you remember, we've, again, if you haven't done my electricity lesson, don't worry about it. This doesn't matter to you yet. You can learn it later. But there's two different types of electricity. There's, I'm doing that thing again, aren't I? There's DC current, what, DC, direct current. And there's AC, which is alternating current. So in alternating current, the, the, the current moves backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards. It changes direction constantly. Whereas in DC current, it just moves in one direction. Why do you only really use DC current in electromagnets? 
why wouldn't you use alternating current? It's because, um, obviously, the direction that the current is flowing in makes a difference to the direction that the magnetic field is going in. So if your current was constantly going uh, left to right, right to left, left to right, right to left, left to right, right, what would happen is that the north and south pole of your electromagnetic would keep switching as well, which wouldn't be very practical. So you use DC current, so the north and the south of, of your electromagnet are fixed. Right, <sighs> I'm going to go over to Facebook. <laughs> because that is the end of the lesson. I'm just gonna go and see if anyone's left me any comments. There's probably quite a lot of, um, dude, it's like 25 minutes supposed to be into the lesson and you're not on screen, why isn't your lesson started? Comments, but uh, we'll see. Here we go, refresh, refresh. Right, thank you so much for joining me. Um, this was the last lesson before half term. So next week is uh, half term, it's York half term and I happen to live in York, so my children are off school and I need to do some parenting. Um, oh, Tiger and Birds are here! Oh, hello, that's nice. And I know that Max is here. It takes more than tech issues to put us off. Bless you. I, I mean, I didn't know that already, obviously, because I've tested you many times. Um, thank you for making it Tiger and Bird. Thank you for making it Max as well. Yeah, next week it's half term, so I'm parenting. And then the week after that, uh, we're just going to pick up again with uh, electromagnetism. We're going to do about uh, how, how electric motors work, how transformers work, how we all have electricity in our houses. And then we're moving on to radioactivity and astronomy. Um, so yeah, all right, that's it. Thank you so much for joining me. I will see you not next week, uh, but the week after. Bye.